the credibility of the Western sanctions on Russian oil has now come into the spotlight. The Russian oil exports have now returned to pre-war levels, generating $11 billion of revenue through what are being described as mysterious fleets and uncertain entities who are transporting the Russian oil from Russia to their customers. Now, Bloomberg report has now indicated that the price cap on the Russian oil has effectively failed. The West had tried to impose a $60 per barrel cap on Russian oil as part of the sanctions. And according to Russia's finance ministry data, the net oil revenues have almost doubled between April and October this year. And this has paradoxically profited dozens of shipping companies as well that are actually pretty difficult to track. And nearly about 45% of the Russian oil has been transported with the help of these quote-unquote shadow fleet. And this shows the growing importance of the shadow fleet that is evident from Russia's net income from the oil that now stands at about $11.3 billion as of October. And this has been the highest monthly income from oil exports since the war began last year. And that's not all. Ships from Greece transported more Russian oil than any other nation in 2023. They accounted for almost about a quarter of all oil shipments from Russia this year. And this also shows that Russia has found a way of getting around the central transaction system. In the first nine months of 2023, domestic and shadow fleet owners had collected, collectively moved about 70% of all Russian cargo. The United States has said that they are now going to look more carefully at the price cap. Now, on the other hand, there are several Western nations that are still buying crude oil from Russia. Apart from those nations, Russia has also managed to find quite a few new markets. And according to a Reuters report, easing global oil prices will, of course, help India boost imports from Russia. As lower than $60 a barrel price will enable buyers to use Western services such as insurance and ships. Now, though revenue from the fossil fuels exported to EU has declined more than 90%, but more than 90%, in 2023, the bloc has still purchased more than $18 billion worth of crude oil and natural gas. And this comes after the Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit to West Asia. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said during Putin's visit to Saudi Arabia that the Russian leader and the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had confirmed their specific agreements which were reached as part of the OPEC Plus deal. All right, now to give us more perspective in terms of how all of this, of course, is happening, we're being joined by Dr. Helena Ivanov, who's an associate fellow at the Henry Jackson Society, and she's joining us live on this broadcast from Belgrade in Serbia. Uh, now, let me, in fact, begin by asking you, Ms. Ivanov, the question is this, have Western sanctions actually failed against Russia, and how has Russia managed to do this? Well, I think that, it, you know, the answer to that question is a bit complicated. I don't think that this is a black and white situation where we can say, oh, they've completely worked on all fronts or, oh, they've completely failed on all fronts. I think it is a mixed picture. I think obviously the data that you've mentioned about the profits that Russia has made when it comes to oil mm -hmm. are clearly showing that Russia is still capable to find alternative routes and to make profit on its fossil fuel. It also shows that the price cap and several methods that the Western countries have adopted are yet to be completely implemented to be functional. That Russia is basically still capable to find alternative ways to kind of circumvent these kinds of problems. So on one hand, you could say that there are definitely aspects of sanctions that haven't worked uh, to a level that would be satisfactory. However, I think that a lot of other data is showing that nevertheless, Russian economy, both in the short term and in the long term, has been severely damaged by the sanctions. So, for example, according to the OECD for 2023, Russian GDP is expected to shrink to up to up to 2.5 percent, um, except for defense spending. Everything else is down. Investments are down and consumptions are down. If you look at the Russian economy more generally, you know, it has. Dr. Ivanov, if I can just interject there, you know, the whole purpose of these sanctions was to, in fact, hurt the Russian economy so much that Russia would no longer be able to fund its war in Ukraine. And now the information is that the Russian oil exports have generated a surplus of almost about $70 billion. And this is for the first nine months of this year. And this means that the Western sanctions have not only not failed in curtailing the amount of revenue that Russia can get to fund its war machine, but in many ways they've also shown the limitations that the United States predominantly and also the European partners have when it comes to decoupling from the Russian oil. They could do so, but what that has done is that has pushed Russia away from the dependence it had on the West. 
how serious a concern do you think the Russian decoupling has been with the Western economy? Well, I think, as, as I say, I think what, what, what becomes really important here is for the Western alliance to find a way to uh, encourage other third-party countries to also adopt sanctions and to also not participate in purchasing Russia's oil. And of course, like even if you look at the European picture, like be before the invasion, certain European countries have allowed themselves to become overly reliant on Russian fossil fuels. And then when Russia invaded Ukraine back in February of 2022, of course, it was going to be very difficult, if not even impossible, for certain countries to completely cut off their reliance on Russian fossil fuel, which is why the European Union, for example, has decided to allow certain countries to have a phasing out system whereby over time they're expected to cut out Russia's fossil fuels, but they're not expected to do that immediately. Obviously, all of those things mean that Russia's fossil fuels still find their way to be right. sold across the market, unfortunately, even some Western ones. But nevertheless, that is far from saying that the sanctions have not worked at all. If you look at just the performance of the Russian economy generally, mm -hmm. rather than just the nature of oil. All right. My final question to you is about those very controversial Nord Stream pipelines that were blown up, you know, in the initial months of the war. Now, a lot of questions have been asked, had been asked at the time that this war began about Germany's dependence on Russian oil. Germany had said that it would slowly dissociate itself, it would decouple its dependence on the Russian hydrocarbons. How successful do you think the Germans have actually been in disconnecting themselves from the Russian hydrocarbons from powering their economy? I think so far they have made substantial progress. I think given just how dependent uh, Germany was, and you know, this is this was the reality that everybody has woken up to in February 2022. Uh, during Chancellor Merkel's time, there was this idea that Germany could have some kind of a functional relationship with Russia. And during that time, Merkel has basically made the German economy extremely dependent on Russia's fossil fuel. And then in February 2022, when it was clear that all political and economic ties with Russia must be cut off and that Germany also must cut them off, uh, that was an incredibly difficult task. And of course, the German people are paying a price for that, you know, with the energy prices increase, with the bills increasing, with the general living cost crisis that, you know, is now a problem not just in Germany, but across the Western world as well. Right. But I think if you just look at where Germany was back in February 2022, where Germany is now, I think substantial progress has been made. And I think furthermore, if you listen to the uh, political speeches and general political positioning of mm -hmm. German's political establishment, I think it is very clear that Germany plans to cut off its reliance on, on Russia completely, which is why I think, again, it, even in the long run, right. Russia's economy is very likely to pay consequences um, for deciding to engage in Ukraine. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Ivanov, for joining us and getting us that perspective there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.